So, hello everyone. I'm Frank and my goal is basically give you the tools and the structure to generate idea, build an idea and just like make it really quick and get it as quickly as possible to something and then iterate on it. Um, these are the skills that I usually made my own and um, served me really, really well. So I hope that's really helpful. Okay, can I share my screen? Uh, what we are using is like HackMD, which is just like plain markdown for ideas in general. You just have to, the ability to write text. So, um, structure in the following. The intro, which is me, I'm Frank. Then in Think, we will um, answer the question how to generate ideas. In Sketch, we will answer the question how to structure an idea in a beautiful and in a fast manner. And in Paint, we will make the first step and write a little smart contract. Okay, so in, so in Think, we will make 100 words, then we make 10 sentences, and then we rate and select. Mm -hmm. Can you see the screen? Good. Nice. One, two. Mm, brain, think. So in 100 words, the main gist of it is like creating a rich picture. For example, when we just write down some words, for example, we have here a nice chair, then we have a technician, technician, then we have a microphone where I'm currently speaking to you, and Moderator, nice, yeah. And we have a time clock. But these are just some words that you basically come up with while you are just looking around. Helps a lot, but when you want to have something which is more rich, then you just look at the memory, for example. That's usually what I do with my clients as well. When they basically have a rough idea, then we just generate more to basically select better. And so we just go through memories in general. It's a little bit weird, but it works absolutely well. Um, for example, when I look back, um, you know mandala? Mandala is like a little thing when you, it's like when I was five years old. There was like me, little Frank, with a really weird haircut, and then you take a piece of paper, you fold it together, and then you cut it. And then you, when you open it up, you get this kind of weird structure, and it looks beautiful. Okay. Yeah, and this is for me a mandala. And for mandala, I can create many other words, like a scissor, then the painting, then a chablon, then the colors, and so on. And when we're creating more pictures, we just can go through life and can think about memories. For example, in university, there was a night shift, uh, which me and my friend basically just did math the whole night. And we, in the morning, we looked at the sun. It was beautiful. And we were completely done with the day. And the brain didn't work, the whole feeling with it. And these are just rich memories, rich pictures. Mm -hmm. So let's try to create some more new. Pete, one question. What is your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Oh, it'd be Abyss. The Abyss? I think it works fine. The Abyss. Do you have a favorite musician, a favorite song? One of them? Take your time. Just a song. Beat it. What is the name? Michael Jackson, beat it. Michael Jackson, nice. Michael Jackson. Yeah, and based on the song, you basically have a lot of memories, and there you can generate way, way, way more. I just add a little bit more. So we have. Mandala, which I iterated, Night Shift, The Biz, Michael Jackson. My favorite one is Fight Club. It's just hilarious. And then we have, for example, when I look at university, there I have like um, marketing, which are some nice memories. Um, then project management. Then we had digital. Digital. Then we had physics, and then we had 
<laughs> when a friend walked against the wall, it was quite fun. Um, another one, it's like when we just look at Polkadot, they have there a lot of memories as well. Then we can take Fala, for example, then there's Akala, then there's Astar, and mostly to every kind of chain, I have one person specific in mind and one scenario where we just chatted about different things and where he teached me a little bit of how does it work. Asta, Fala, then we have Sideguise, that's Harald, and then we have Hydra DX or Hydration. So now we have like 100 words. We can go forever with that, and that's like a lot of fun when you're in a little kind of group and you can ask directly questions. So, and then we make next thing 10 sentences. Sentences. So we take one of them. I take here the Technician, then here I take the Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Copy, and I like the wall. And then here, let's take Fala. Oh. And copy this. One. Why does this didn't work? Again. Technician, then hello. And then and fala. So now with 10 sentences, uh, the thing is like when you have like a rich picture, you just create a theme out of it. Like the goal is still what we are currently do is to create an idea. So usually when you have to speed up something or you have a technology they want to use and you need an idea to it to basically iterate on it and to get an understanding of that technology. So when we have a technician, then the theme would be like um, hardware. So this is the theme. Then Michael Jackson is obviously music. Then we have a wall which is crafting because you have like brick layers. Then you have the crafting area, and then you have Fala, and there is computation. That's what they do. Computation. So, and now we need a phrase. We need kind of the best marketing phrase that you ever can imagine, that when you want to create the best billion dollar startup idea, you need a phrase, one catchphrase. Nike, for example, is like, just do it, or something like that. It's completely vague, make, doesn't make sense, and mostly doesn't provide value, but it communicates the idea super well. Um, so then we have a technician, which is like your hardware on the go. Then Michael Jackson, your music in your pocket. Your music in your pocket. Crafting wall. Then it's like um, what we can do. Um, services, decentralized services, decentralized services. Obviously, more you know, is better as you get in that kind of stuff, because the more you creative you can get. The same like in every field. More you know, more creative you can be. Uh, computation. Um, my favorite use case is like Blender, which is like you make a 3D model like a dragon, and then you use Fala to compute it, and then you get like kind of different kind of animation out of it based on the contract itself. So I use Blender, which is a 3D modeling software. Um, Blender the dot. Nice. So now we have 10 sentences, and now the goal is just to rate and select them. Go with your gut feeling and just do it. So hardware, your hardware on the go, hmm, that's a free. Your machine on your pocket, it's a seven. Decentralized services, could be a four. Computation, uh, sometimes I do better, four as well. And now we just rate them. So this goes on the top. We copy this here. And then we, next up, rate and select. So we can now think about it, what we like to build. Like we will now spend the next three days most likely on this kind of idea. I will still go with the best one, which is music. Michael Jackson, your music in your pocket. And that's like selection. I put this thing up make this thing bold, 
And this is currently like what we did so far. Wrote a little bit nice piece of text. And next up, the next thing is sketching. This is one of my favorite part. This is like how we take the idea and just dress it nicely, like give it a nice little suit and mold it nicely. We take the big idea that we currently have, which is super wake, and we chop this thing down to something that we actually can build. Okay, sketch. So usually I start with the idea, and I just take the catchphrase. Wee! Your music in your pocket. And this is the idea. Usually what is really helpful to communicate the idea nicely and pretty, to put it in a problem and in a solution, because that's what people like. Problem, and then solution. The solution is always quite obvious, so we have uh, Checo XYZ. This will be our web app, what we want to build. And the problem is, so when you're speaking about the music industry, that's obvious that the most creators doesn't get the money. That would be kind of the obvious case. And um, that the only thing that you can do with music so far is that you can listen to it. But what you can do is like you can trade it really nicely because as, um, as natural as it is, it's a digital representation. It's just music, it's just some audio with a little bit of waves and a little bit of noises. Um, but what we can do, we can associate some value to it, so we can tokenize it, and we can give it some functionality, like minting, swapping, firing, and we can use it for a lot of other ways to integrate in other services. So the problem would be that mm, music only has one use case currently. That's what I just come up with. You can use many of them, and you can just iterate it. Okay, so then we have the idea, and then we basically think about the requirements. When you're crafting an idea, when you sketch it, the main goal is to put it nicely. There are many ways. When you're, for example, in the art industry, then you would start with concept art. When you're in a construction area, then you would start with a draft. Take a pencil and actually draft the thing that you want to build. And in software engineering, it's usually you start with a software requirement engineering sheet, which is but I just copied it really bluntly and made this on my own. Like, I'm, I just took the things that I like and use it. So, in, we have like functional requirements, and then we have non-functional requirements. Um, can do what you like, but that's like generally like how it works the best. So, as functional requirements, our goal is Checo. So, then we're working with decentralized technology, so um, the app must do uh, create ownership. That's the main part of Web3. The app must allow to add functionality to the song, like when you're listening to the song, somewhere appears fire, what you can actually create. Um, the app must do add functionalities, and um, trading. So you have to allow to basically trade your music around it, or maybe like splatter it, which is like you take the song and split it in different parts, which is then fractionalizing it. Non-functional requirements, the app should be pretty. Like, people love pretty things. I like pretty things. App must be pretty. That's it. You can spend days on that kind of stuff, or you just can quickly it through. Important? from my personal experience, it's like speed, just rush this thing through. Requirements, and then we craft it in stories. Uh, stories are, it's just like where we take the requirements and write a user story for it, which then we can go further with it. So as stories, there's usually a user story, there also can be a smart contract story, a maintainer story, a musician story. It's like they're going to the app, they click the button, they are amazed, they love it, and then they actually use it, they sell it. This is kind of a story that you create, which would be a musician story. As a maintainer story, I want to look at it, want to look at my users, which then already tingles some, I want some dashboard maybe. But usually, user story is fine. So as a user, by the way, the wording is quite nice. As a user, I want to. 
And with that kind of little phrase, you can throw basically everything that you can imagine in a small little sentence, which is easy to communicate. Especially in our decentralized technology, we use way too much buzzwords. So as a user, I want to mint a song. Um, as a user, I want to add functionality to my song. As a user, I want to share my song. Uh, as a user, I want to fractionalize, fractionalize my song, so then everybody can be part of the song, and we can be a huge, happy Michael Jackson community and can party him up in some kind of sense. Um, as a user, I want to fractionalize my NFT. It's great. And that's it. That's kind of the stories that we're going to tell. We can go further with it. We can go more with details. When you com want completely up nuts, then you just make a comma and write because. Why you want to mint the song? Because you want to declare ownership. You want to trade the song. Why? And that you just can add because. OK, next up, then we have diagrams. I hope you can see it. One, two, three, four. What we will be using is planned UML, which is just a nice, quick way to craft something. It's like making diagrams. By the way, let's look this up. This is currently what we did so far. OK. Then we have a user, and the user wants mint. Then we have a user, and the user wants add. And we have a user, and the user wants to share. And we have a user, and the user wants to fractionalize. I have a little bit of legacy, so just forgive me. So now we have a nice little diagram. You can see here mint, add, share, fractionalize. What I don't like, it's like from the top to the bottom. I log love more like left to right. So then what you can do with this kind of planned UML thing, which is like we left to right direction. Here, look, that looks way nicer. OK, so this is such called use case diagram. Title, use case diagram. In a use case diagram, you can show in one picture what the app should do and which functionality does it have. Use case. Here we go. And next up, we write a class diagram. Land UML. One more. Here we go. Here, that's currently what we did so far. We basically generated an idea, we rated the idea, we select one idea, and now we shape the idea in one little thing. And currently, we are on plant UML. I just saw that somebody comes in, so that's the reason why I repeat it. <laughs> Next up, class diagram. So title will be class diagram. In the class diagram, we just think quickly about how the data moves. In the use case diagram, we thought, like, what does it should do? Second one is, like, what data actually we should need, which is, like, the database, like, what is, is a user, how a user could look like, what is the music, like, there are audio waves, I guess. Just think about the data. Just this one minute spending on this little task diagram helps tremendously. Class, and then we call it Jekyll. There's a nice character from One Piece who calls Jekyll as well with this little pendle. I can recommend one piece. It's hilarious. OK. And so Checo has a song. So the song is first a link to something, which is in the end a string. Then we have, you need to get the song, which is kind of a function, which returns the string. And then we have a f method that calls fractionalize. It's a method. And then we have a function which calls, what do we have? We have mint, share. Oh, yeah. Um, do ownership, which is the same like mint. Do ownership. Yeah, a song. And then we have owners, which is an address. That's it. You can go for literally hours with it. And if you look up in Etherscan, there's this nice little tool which allows you to use a contract, and then you write SVG, and then it basically converts the contract in a nice little diagram, like here. 
Here, this is our beautiful diagram. We have here a nice rectangle with one, two data points and three methods. And if you look at Etherscan, like CryptoKitties or something, you see this big thing, which is then like 15 rectangles, 20 rectangles, and way too complex. But if you break the gist out of it, it has an ownership and kind of a link to kind of a CryptoKitty. OK, the next step. Plant UML. Oh, that works actually really nice. Title, sequence diagram. In a sequence diagram, we basically take the user story and think of how the data should move. Sequence. So how does this work? Um, mm -hmm. So then we have, a, we have an actor. The actor is the user. Uh, what is your name, by the way? What is the name? Tom? Yeah. Som? H O N G. H O N G. Hong? Oh, nice. We have an actor which is young, which is like the main user of our app. Because in the end, in the first beginning, you have one user, which is most likely you or me, who's a developer. So, Hong, then you have an entity, and the entity is the web app which is the client. And then we have a database, that's a smart contract. You also can write entity, but I just like the, the picture of the database correlated to a smart contract a little bit more. Yeah, and then we say Hong goes to the web app and does clicky. So, and then the web app goes to the smart contract and does callie. And then the smart contract goes back to Hong and says, does uh, Sandy. So basically, it has ownership, and you are the owner of the song. Sandy. And that's currently how it looks like. You have something from the left to the right and from the top of the bottom. And what we want to add here. Oop, oop. here. Here, that's currently how it looks like. And that's how we can basically structure our idea, which is still the main part. We generate an idea, and now we are structuring idea and give it a nice little shape. Beautiful dress, make the hair nice, and just say, OK, this is kind of the idea, and this is kind of a shape. OK, so Hong does not does to the goes to the web and does clicky, so more like add song. Add song. And the web app goes to the smart contract, and adds the song. And the smart contract goes to the smart contract itself and does mint kind of stuff. And this is like, let's go a little bit up, mint. Mint and add. We can put this in a group and say add and no. Here we go. So now we have a group that calls add or I think mint is better. And next up, what we want to have is fractionalize. So Hong goes to the web app and basically clicks, um, I want to fractionalize my song. Oi, I want to split my thing apart, split my song. And the web app goes back to Hong, and Hong says, I know the web app says then, yeah, sure. And then the web app when goes to the smart contract again. I think uh, do the splitty thingy, splitty thingy. Uh, I love when you take a little bit of like a little bit uh, playful wording and like a little bit of abstract wording, like do splitty thingy, do like when you make it cute, it gets m it gets less abstract. People can relate it more. When you come with a lot of passwords like fractionalizing, minting, ERC, NFTs, uh, PSP, then we have pellets and so on. This completely like you see it in people's face, they have a hard time to actually relate to, and you can have a hard time to bring their ideas into a shape and then make a prototype or whatever they want to do. It's super hard. So just by like having a playful language helps a lot by communication. Can recommend. 
So do the splitty thingy and the smart contract goes to itself. Smart contract. Sure, I do splitty. Splitty. Okay, and then we have a group and it calls fractionalize. And I hope this will work. Nice. It's basically, hey, you go to the web app, say, hey, I want to split my song. Your web app comes back, sure, let's do it. And then we go back to the smart contract, hey, do the splitty thing. You know, you have the song, do the split, and then the smart contract does, yeah, sure, let's do the splitty. So it breaks up all the different kind of layers, and then you have many layers, and then the many layers basically gets minted as it owns, and then you can share with your friends. Okay, and when I... Basically, we just looked it through, what we did so far. Currently, the topic is how to work with ideas. First, we how to generate ideas. We just take the most simple approach. We took 100 words, split this around in sentences. We took the sentence, phrased it in different kinds of themes. And based on your theme, we created an idea, our billion dollar startup idea. And then we rate and select it. What we like the most? Do we like it like this way? This, you just can go with your gut feeling. Like, you are a human being. You are mostly the customer customer itself. So if you like it, most likely someone else likes it as well. And then second part, how to structure an idea. We structure an idea in the following. We create the idea and split it in problem and solution. We thought about the requirements like functional requirements and non-functional requirements. And then we split it up in user story. The user should do, the user must do, the user should click the app. Or the smart contract should do the following. So just split in nice little stories. And then we draw some diagrams, a use case diagram, which in one picture declares like what the app can do. Then we thought quickly about the data. This is super rough, but thinking about the data itself helps a lot. And then a sequence diagram, how the things are moving. And that's basically how to structure an idea. And now we still have time left, so we can start the painting. In painting, we will create a smart contract based on the things that we just do. So hashtag, hashtag. Now we do the art. Paint, nice. Let's go down. So I, uh, maybe some people did already work with Ink. Ink is kind of a smart contract language in Polkadot. The cool thing about Ink is like it's, you can create simple little programs and can test the idea out quickly. You don't have to ask someone. You don't need to ask for words. You just can take the smart contract and deploy it. And then when you feel like really comfortable about your logic and your web app and everything works nicely, then you take the smart contract and basically go bigger, then you create a pellet out of it, then you make many pellets, and then you create your blockchain, because a blockchain is just an uh, accumulation of many pellets, little tiny programs that work together. Okay, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We make a directory, and we call this sub-zero. So we go to sub-zero, and then we say cargo, contract, new, checko. Here we go. Checko. And then we basically can open this up. That's our smart contract. Currently, it holds just one value, which you can see, which is a bool. It's a flipper contract. What flipper allows you to get the flip, so it's true. When you flip it, it gets false. So when you get the flip again, it's false. And then you flip it, and it's true. And then you flip it, and it's false. And you flip it, and it's true, and so on. So first, let's get rid of the comments. I generally like to leave the boilerplate as it is, because when this thing compiles, I know it will compile. That's currently the whole boilerplate. We have one value, which is bool. We have a function that calls new. We have, a, we have two functions, which is here, flip. And that's another function called get. OK, and then let's go up. Oh, does this work? And here, sweet. Usually the font is not that big. I like it smaller, but I hope you can read it really well. So first, here we have to add a song. So a song, which is a string. And then we have an owner, which is an account ID. Nice. And for when we use strings, we have to use, use ink dot prelude dot string string here we got it now it works then here when we initialize the contract 
we're calling this new function. Whoop. So, and then we have to add the song, which is string from, and now let's go to YouTube. So Michael Jackson we said, right? Michael Jackson, uh, was it beat it? Beat it. Beat it. Beat it. Here we go. Usually when I do this with um, my clients, we are in the same kind of speed. Like now we have around like 30 minutes and we already have took the idea, we rated the ideas of different kind of thoughts that they want to do and we give it a shape. You can do this way longer if you want to, but if you are just quick, you basically give the, the client the ability to comprehend how to work with software. Many people don't, un, like, um, software is complicated. We're only 30 million software engineers, so it's not like this is like common knowledge that we learn in school. Um, here. I will not play it, but I need this little string here. Nice. Yep, yep. Nice. So we have a song, which is currently just a string. Later, you can basically make a song, which has many properties. And then we have an owner. Owner, which is an account ID from and then 0xff32. Don't question it. You can read it in the docs. It's weird. Nice. And we can get rid of this here. Yeah. Do we have still something? Ink, prelude, string, and what is this here? No, we don't need that. Cool. Let's make a new tab. Click here. Nice, let's look what's in there. We currently have one file, which is librs, and we have a target folder. And now let's take our initial contract, which we just declared some variables, and that's it, and just run it. Why we do it? Because if you're just adding more and more complex, in the end it doesn't compile, then you're struggling, like, where's the... I don't want to curse, but where's the bug? Yeah, cargo, contract, build. I got a new PC on my birthday. This is my new PC, and this thing is currently like really fast, which I really like. On the last one, it took me around five minutes, and I was like just eating popcorn and looking at the thing. Um, and that's where I, the myth started, why, why I understand why compiled languages breed that kind of developers which are really calm, because the most of the time they just sit and eating popcorn. Um, yeah, that was the thing. Where, by the way, uh, we just built it, so now we have a... Uh, contract, so we know it compiles. Let's add at least one function. So in ink, we basically write ink message. That's the thing that we have to do. So pub fn, and then we do do ownership, which is the same like mint. We can call it mint, and that returns nothing, and we have to basically give a reference to our object, and then we say self dot, we call it owner, owner, self dot env dot caller. And because we are changing the variable, we make mute. Uh, let's make another function message, and then it's basically pub fn change song, which is mute again, self, and then we have self, song, self, um, what do you want to do? Um, string from my better song. And now it's cool to have like some getters, then we basically can see something. Message, fn, get song. And get song will, okay, and self dot song, 
should do the job. And now I'm super curious if I did something wrong. Cargo, contract, build. I did something wrong. Self, song. So here. Clone. It doesn't like it when I just give it away and then it loses its value. It's like a little bit nitty. Ooh, amazing. Okay, so now it works. So now in the first thing of step, we did one iteration and now we have to test it. We basically wrote something, we built it something and now the last step is calling something. So for that, we make it full screen, then we split down substrate contracts node minus minus def now we have our local um, blockchain running which is a substrate contracts node and then we can try to basically deploy our contract so cargo contract instantiate minus minus suri we have the option to twin between alice which is a which is a little girl then we have bob which is an old german dude and then we have charlie which is a little kid kind of thing um, i go with Bob, the old man. Nice. And then we still have to execute it. So the contract sits there. Here we go. And then cargo, contract, call, contract. That's the contract. Then the message is get song. Do we need something? Oh yeah, and sorry, everybody can call it, so it doesn't matter, so Charlie will call it. Nice, and this is our YouTube link, so if you click there, then it will open it up, and Michael Jackson will play it. So this will already work. And now I can change the song as well, when I do cargo, contract, call, message, and then the argument is a new string, and I will change the string. So now we did the first iteration. So let's sum this up. Mm. Put this up here. I go down. I go up here. X clip. Cell clipboard. Because it's a new laptop, I learned some new things. Mm. This is Rust. I don't want that. Nice, here, and so now basically in this little kind of presentation what we did so far is like we worked with an idea, we had kind of a client or maybe yourself, you have this grandiose idea and just to be sure we created many ideas where we just created words and then made sentences, added catchphrases and then select one. And then in the second thing, we learned how to structure an idea, how to take the idea and give it a shape. We uh, leaned on software requirement engineering 101, which is then we took the idea, put it in a problem and a solution, made some use case diagrams, made some sequence diagrams, created some stories and some requirements and just thought this thing quickly through. Like, don't estimate it, like it's 30 minutes. And I saw in some projects where people thinking about the idea in around two weeks, then maybe doing some kind of draft, how it will look like another two months, and then they to go in huge trouble to actually do something, and it will take another month. So just by this half hour, you basically did a lot of stuff really quick, what, what other people would take a lot of, lot of hours. So, and that's the reason why I think it really useful and why my friends and my clients and all the people that I basically do a lot of prototypes with them, uh, really like it. And it's a huge fun because you have a lot of laughter when you're generating ideas. Then you can think easily with different kind of people, with designers, with, um, uh, with writers and so on, because it's such a clear language that you are communicating. And when you are actually doing the thing, which is developing the software, then you can mold it nicely. Like you, you have a clue how to make the first step. Another first step would be do the Figma and make a rectangle, which we already made it clear, like by the user flow, Hong wants to mint the song, so we need a nice button, we need a rectangle, we need kind of a login kind of thing. Um, we also can do when you're working with artists, which is like um, just something, make one single step, that's paint. 
That's what we did so far. And so that worked super well. And I, when you want, you can ask some questions. And I can tell some stories if you like to. And one thing, uh, there's a GitHub repo, by the way. Um, this I did uh, two weeks ago to, as a preparation, which is a little book, which basically just elaborates what I did. Uh, frankbever.github, or just Frank Bever, 100 ideas, and then you should find it. Uh, this is the link. Now I wrote a little intro, and then we have three sections, the intro, thing, sketch, paint, outro. And it's just written instead of speaking, where I communicate with you or with you. Yeah, I hope that was fun and you had kind of a joy, and it was maybe you get some kind of useful skills, and if it's just like some little plant UML or something. Thank you very much. If you have some questions, ask. If not, it's fine as well. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your talk, Frank. It was very Thank interesting to see you prototyping your ideas live. And I also appreciate you being a Vim user, because I was using Vim as well for, for many years. <laughs> so do you, have, uh, do you have some questions for the Frank? Anyone? I'm always um, outside most of the time. Just hit me up. Um, we also can create more of your great song of Jacob.xyz. Or here's a question. Well, it's <coughs> not really a question, but it's more like uh, I, I'm, I'm curious whether you could add GP, like chat GPT into this to, to help. Speed, more speed. Instead of in half an hour, you can do yeah. this in 50 minutes. But the problem is if you don't know how to ask the right question, you'll never get an answer. And like just to knowing that something like this exists, which called software requirement sheet, helps you a lot because you ask, can you write me a software requirement for my Checo? Checo does the following and does this and does this. And it throws something similar out. It adds just more speed. But if you don't know how to ask the question, which is the most issue, then you can spend still weeks on brainstorming, still weeks on something. And if you are generating ideas, you are always using the things that you know. If you're using ChatGPT, it throws you many buzzwords about Web3, what everything is like, grandiose an idea, and swapping, and CK. But then you have to start a researching. What the fuck is CK? <coughs> Sorry. What the hell? Uh, what? <laughs> how? Like, then you have to do the research, and then another three, uh, three days of rabbit holing through it. And then you are gone, oh, I don't think this was a good idea. Because you're generating the ideas by yourself, you're always working in your own little uh, limitations. If you use ChatGPT, you just add more fuel to it. So when you can work with it, do it. And with sketching the same, it just adds fuel to the thing, which is great. Yeah, I, w I was thinking potentially you could load some of your ideas as prompts. Uh, yeah, you're, you're making it much. Yeah, definitely just if you just put an open-ended question, you'll not get any good answers. But yeah, I think if uh, like yeah. chat will, it's uh, super recommended. Just put it in ChatGPT. But then uh, the, the usual thing, because when I go through it, you still have to explain like uh, how a software requirement engineer uh, sheet looks like, uh, and then you, when you're starting googling it, you get like many many answers, and nothing is really helpful. Uh, so now you just can copy it and just make it your own, and make your first step in half an hour, which is super quick. Yeah. 